So, hello everyone. I'm sure every single person knows me here. So, um, but just a quick, you know, introduction. My name is Emmanuel, and um, yeah, I'm a student at, of Edgehill University, and I'll be speaking to you today on the topic of Jesus Christ. So, that is friendship with Jesus Christ. But before we start, as usual, can we uh, close our eyes for a quick prayer? So, uh, Father Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for giving us all this opportunity to be here this evening. And I pray that as we are hearing, as we're listening, let the words that come out of me, let it come from you. Let it speak to the hearts of everyone that are here today. And let them hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, before I get into this message, there are two questions I would like each and every one of us to think about. And the first one is, uh, think of... A friend. Think of, this could be a best friend, this could be a family member, a relative. Uh, think of one quality or a trait that each of these people have that you absolutely love them, admire them for. And this could be a weird quality. Like, for example, I have a friend who absolutely loves cheese. She loves it so much, she wants her wedding cake to be cheese. All right. Now, think of one of these uh, friends and think of why you love them so much. Um, another friend of mine loves dad jokes, and they can insert a dad joke into any conversation. All right? And sometimes it's not even relevant at all, but it's so funny, you just can't help but laughing. Right? Um, the second question, if you've, if, have you all thought of a, of a person and a quality that they have? Yeah? Okay. The second question, Think back to your first week of university. Think back to your first month of university. Think about the friendships you made, the people you met. Think about the societies you joined. Think about the groups you joined that you thought, you know, I would make good friends here. Uh, I remember my first, um, my first week of university. And like me, for some of us, that was a really, really long time ago. Like, I'm sure. <laughs> For some of us, that was at least four years ago. Um, I remember joining so many different societies, so many different um, clubs because I wanted to make as many friends as possible. I wanted to meet as many people as possible. Uh, I remember the, the bustling, the excitement of Freshers Week. Um, I, I was on a mission, it would seem like. On just, I was joining as many societies as I could. And I think back to those people that I met and the friendships I supposedly made. And now I think back to those people, I, I can't think of where they are now. And I'm sure each of you has a similar story where you've met friends, you've made uh, people that you thought this would be long time friendship, that these would be relationships that would grow and bloom to something beautiful. But where are they now? Um, I'm not here to make any of us sad or depressed, but... <laughs> I'm just uh, trying to show that the friendship that we have, we that call ourselves Christians, we that call ourselves children of God, we have a friendship with a person that is with us consistently, that is with us no matter where we are. Uh, this is a friend that loves us so, so much that he's died for us. He loves us so much, so dearly, that he is currently, you know, pleading for us, for each and every one of us. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 13, that the greatest love, the greatest love, it is a superlative term that means nothing surpasses that. The greatest love a person can have for his friend is to die for them, to give their life for this friend. Now, Jesus Christ loves us so much, so unbelievably, so recklessly that he gave, he forsake everything he had for you and I. Now, remember those qualities I asked earlier, just a few minutes ago. I am 100% sure none of you thought they would die for you. 100% sure. Now, over my, my university experience, over my still go, ongoing university experience, um, I've come to make great friendships. Uh, and I'm not flexing here, I'm not trying to, 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 to boast, but I've made incredible friendships. Friendships that I'm sure will be long-lasting. 
but I can 100% say I'm not going to die for any of, any of them. Like if, <laughs> sorry, Tab. <laughs> but I would not die for any one of them. And I'm sure they wouldn't die for me either. But Jesus Christ, like I've said before, is someone that, you know, he's, he forsake all of it just for you and I. And today we'll be looking into stories about more examples of Jesus, Jesus Christ's friendship. But before we get to that, one of the most thought-provoking things that I um, came across whilst preparing and planning for this message is taken from Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And uh, we see in the Bible that Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to 19 also talks about this story. It tells, give us more of a context about the story. But I'll quickly read Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And it says, a few days later, Jesus went back to Capernaum, and the news spread that he was at home. So many people came together that there was no room left, not even out in front of the door. Jesus was preaching the message to them when four men arrived, carrying a paralyzed man to Jesus. Because of the crowd, however, they could not get to them. They could not get the man to him, so to Jesus. So they made a hole in the roof right above the place where Jesus was. And when they made an opening, they let the man down, lying on his mat. Now let us imagine this for a second. So we have these men who are looking after this paralyzed man. And they, back in those times, obviously if you're paralyzed, you need someone to transport you from places to places. Now these men, these friends, that is their role. They carry this man wherever he needs to go, wherever he's going. Now they hear that, you know, there is this man that can heal their friend. There is this prophet that's been going around and he's been touching people and they're becoming, you know, healed. And they say, you know what, we have to get our friend to this man. They get it, they put it in their mind, they become determined that we need to get our friend healed. So they set off on a journey. All right, we're going we're gonna to heal our friend. The Bible doesn't tell us how long this journey was. We don't know, it could have been hours, it could have been days for all we know. Well, they are carrying their friend all the way to Jesus. Now, they, they get to this place, and there is a massive crowd of people. All right. And this is, I, I was thinking about this story, and this is the point where I would say to myself, all right, I've done all I can. All right. I've carried you this far. I physically cannot. My muscles, are, I might be strong, but my muscles are not. <laughs> they're not. They can't do it anymore. All right. And I would say, okay, I give up. This is, it's you now. But these friends, they don't do that. They look to each other. I imagine they brainstorm. Okay, what, what are we going to do here? How are we going to get this guy to, to this man? And I'm sure the genius among them was like, the roof. Let us go through the roof. So um, I can also imagine that they get there because I'm sure the roof is not easy. Getting to the roof isn't easy carrying someone. So with a test of strength, they get this man to the roof and they're like, okay, the, Jesus Christ is in there. We're out here. How are we going to get this, our friend, to him? And they start digging and they start digging and they start digging. Now, I'm just going to make it a bit closer to home. Now, imagine four friends have said, we need to hear Emmanuel speak this night. <laughs> we must hear him speak. And it's like, they, they make it in their mind. They get determined that we must see Emmanuel speak. And they get to Olmskirk Town, and there's an impromptu Harry Styles concert. <laughs> and they cannot get to me. And they think, how are we going to get to Emmanuel? We need to hear him speak. I don't know why, but they just want to hear me speak. So they said, we'll, we'll climb across the roof. And as we are talking now, the roof starts peeling and plaster starts falling off. These lights start dropping and four men drop in our midst because they want to hear me speak. Now, we see how much determination these friends had. They weren't bothered about who was going to be underneath them, although they probably should have been. <laughs> they weren't bothered about how they would look by outsiders. They weren't bothered about the impression they were given. They were shameless, they were bold, they were loyal to this man that they called a friend. They were willing to give up their time, their freedom, to go to such length for this friend. And in the same way, Jesus Christ has done this for us. He has forsaken all he had to give us a love without any conditions, without any requirements, 
a love that's freely accessible for you and I to achieve or to tap into. Okay, so now we've been looking at three different stories, three different examples of the Bible where we see Jesus Christ's friendship. Um, the first we were looking at is uh, the, uh, the story of the death of a friend called Lazarus. So now with a bit of context, um, we, Jesus Christ gets to this town and he gets a message that his friend Lazarus is dead. Um, this leads to one of the, well, the shortest Bible verses, which is that Jesus Christ wept. Now, uh, verse 33 tells us that Jesus saw Mary weeping and he saw how everyone was crying and tearing up. They were sobbing. And this story strikes me that Jesus Christ was God in human form. He had all the powers. He could do, it could, I mean, he, we just learned he'd been raising people to life. He'd been um, making the, the sick healed. He could speak to mountains and they would move. But then he hears about this friend, he sees everyone crying, and he tears up inside him. He was sorrowful. The Bible said he wept, not just that he cried or he teared up, but he wept, which implies that he was deeply sorrowful. And then it makes me wonder, why was he sorrowful? I mean, he, he's God. He could just speak and raise, um, raise this person up, which he, did, he does do. But then I, I imagine that he's weeping and crying because life without him inevitably leads to death. Without a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are going down a pathway that leads to death. And without a relationship with, with him, we cannot get access to that life. And I'm not talking about life where, well, we all know where we resurrect at the end and we go to heaven. I'm talking about life here on earth as well. A relationship with Jesus gives us an insight into such a beautiful life that we without that relationship, cannot ever access or tap into. The Bible describes it as a life in, a, life in abundance. Life that is so full, it, it, it's unimaginable. So uh, the second story we're looking at is um, found in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 35. If anyone would like to read it, um, yeah, that, that's where you can find it. Um, and we'll be looking at the story of Jesus Christ walking on water. So in this story, uh, the disciples are going ahead of Jesus Christ to their next destination. So Jesus Christ had just finished healing 5,000 people. He just fed them. And uh, he told the disciples to go ahead of them, ahead of him. And they were traveling by boat. And um, as they were journeying, journeying, as they were traveling or sailing, uh, the storms arise and the boat is turned and tossed and there's storms. I imagine there's lightning flashes here and there. I imagine the disciples are trying to get water out of the boat, like quick, quick before it sinks. And as they were trying to get the boat, you know, as straight as possible, as, you know, safe as possible, a few of them see, they see Jesus walking across the water. And I imagine if I was in that situation, I'd probably take off my glasses rub it a few times, put it back on, and then like, even if it's still on my face, because obviously the wind's blowing, everything's going, the glasses are probably in the, in the seat. So they're probably like, who's that? What's going on? A few of them probably thought they were dead. That, oh yeah, we're already dead. That's a ghost, clearly. Um, but no, they saw Jesus. And after Peter gets over the shock that it is actually Jesus walking on water, he says to Jesus, Ask me to come upon this water. Ask me to take a step. And if it is you, I will be able to do that because you are Jesus. We've seen you do all these things. And this is where I see something in the relationship of Jesus Christ and his disciples, Jesus Christ and his friends. Um, a relationship isn't a one-way street. It's not unidirectional. It requires both parties to play a part. These people had a relationship with Jesus, which is why they could, Peter could say that. If he didn't have a relationship with Jesus, he would not know the characteristics and the properties that Jesus had. So, I cannot have a relationship with any one of you without trying to spend time with you, trying to, you know, put in my part. Jesus Christ has already done his part. He has died on the cross for us. He has 
given everything for us and he's there waiting for each and every one of us. It is now left to us to do our part, to join in that relationship. There's a saying that you cannot take uh, a horse. Uh, you can only take a horse to the well. You can't force it to drink. Now, Jesus Christ is waiting for us, waiting for each and every one of us to put in our part into it. He's ready for you to come to him genuinely, wholeheartedly, with a contrite heart. One of the things that this story shows is that a relationship with Jesus is not necessarily an easy one. Um, it's not a relationship that we can will be completely comfortable in. There are going to be moments of uncomfortability. There are going to be moments of challenges where we're faced with things that we think are impossible. Well, then we have to take that step because we've got um, because we we believe in him and we have him by our side. There are going to be times where we feel that he's asking the impossible of us. Um, there are times where I think when I feel that God is telling me to do something, like Jesus is telling me to do something. And I feel my heart beating, my heart pounding, my hands get sweaty, I feel my heart beating my toes, which I should probably get looked at. But I, I, I feel like just so much pressure. I feel challenged to take that step. I have mental debates. Is this Jesus Christ speaking? Is this me just thinking? Uh, what if it's not Jesus and I'm wrong? What's going to happen? But these are challenges that aren't even impossible. We see here Peter is faced with a challenge of stepping on top of water. I don't know how many of you can imagine that. But I, if I were Peter, I wouldn't, it wouldn't even cross my mind. I'm already scared of the boat tipping over. He wants me to step on the water. But this is where we see that in a relationship with Jesus, we are not going to come out the same. We come into that relationship with broken, but come out fixed and completely whole. And we'll be looking at the last and final story, which is where Jesus Christ is um, reassuring his disciples. And he says to them in John chapter 15, verse 18, he says, When I go, you will not be left alone. I will come back to you. And in verse 26 of that same verse, he says, of that same chapter, he says to them again, The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. Now, Jesus Christ is leaving. He's been with the disciples for uh, three and a half years, and he tells them that I'm no longer going to be of this world. I'm going to be going back to my Father in heaven, and I'm going to leave you. And it, it, it reminds me of, you know, losing a friend or, you know, going to university, how you have to separate, to be separate from your friend. And um, you're thinking, oh, you would probably never see them again. The world's going to end. Um, but here Jesus Christ, as he's leaving, he reassures them that we wouldn't be left alone. He is reassuring each and every one of us that we are not alone. He ensures that we wouldn't be left to navigate this world without a helper, without a guide, without a comforter, without someone that can reveal the secret things and without someone that can empower us to do those difficult and challenging things that may seem impossible for us to do. Um, one of the things, that, one of the sayings that I've heard is that Jesus Christ leaving is the best thing that could happen to us as Christians. Because without that, we could not have the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. And uh, an analogy of the Holy Spirit that comes to me is that... Um, if you think of uh, washing up liquid, if you think of soap or a solution, um, we, know, we know the potentials of this soap. We know that it can be used to clean. It can be used to make beautiful things like a lava lamp. I've never made one of those, but I would so love to do. But we know it can be used to make amazing, beautiful things. It can create, um, it can create clean things. But until it is used, until someone makes an intentional action, until someone says, I need to deliberately make this thing clean, that soap is just there, it's left and useless. That soap is left without any purpose and it is completely useless. But when we decide then to use that, we decide to then take a step, we can create wonderful things 
I can bring joy to people, like bubbles. <laughs> and um, we have that access to the Holy Spirit. Through that relationship with Jesus, we have that access. We can be used to create wonderful things. We can be used to do beautiful things, to change the lives of people in amazing ways. Through the Holy Spirit, healings can be achieved. Life has a beautiful purpose, has a meaning. Addictions can be broken. And all of this can be achieved through that relationship with Jesus Christ. There, there is a song that many of us know and might be sung later on. Uh, it is called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And it, this song talks about going through the difficulties that life may bring our way and the challenges that we may face that if we take all of this to Jesus, it will be sorted out. And, and there's a part of that that, um, that really struck out to me. Uh, the line was, do your friends despise and forsake you? And it says, take it to the Lord in prayer. Now, I'm sure if your friends or the people you call your friends despised you and forsook you, they wouldn't really be your friends, would they? But sometimes that is the reality that people are facing. And they feel that the you know, relationships or the people that they call their friends have broken their trust or they have, um, they have disrespected them or have done the, these sort of things to them. But Jesus Christ cannot ever break our trust. He's someone that is 100% reliable, 100% dependable. And like I said before, it's not going to be easy, but he's always there. And just like in the story I read earlier, it was by Peter's side, standing there with him. And just as we go through the difficulties, he's by our side, standing there with us and walking through it with us. <clears throat> now, this is uh, a friend, Jesus Christ, that the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, died for us whilst we were still sinners, whilst we were still his enemies. Whilst we were opposed to him, he died for us. This is such a love that he doesn't require anything of us. He doesn't care that we're still broken. He doesn't care who, what we think, our opinions of ourselves. He doesn't care um, what situations we've gone through. But he, he does care in that he wants to make you a better person and makes you to achieve the purpose that you haven't brought here for. But he doesn't care as in the fact that he accepts you for who you are. So earlier I read that John chapter 15 says the greatest love anyone can have for their friends to give their life for them. And this is the coming that Jesus says um, just after he says that he loves us or that we should love just as Christ has loved us. This is a love that is so strong and unconditional that he died for us without any request. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we, are, we, we do reckless things in our relationships or that we tr are trying to show our friends that we love them completely and then we go do something stupid. No, but it shows that we sometimes might need to put other people ahead of us. We might need to just do something that may inconvenience us a, bit, a little just to make sure that our friends are having a better time. And... it also displays or shows the unconditional love that Jesus Christ has for us. Now, having a friendship with Jesus is one that is long-lasting because if you remain in him, you are in a friend with someone that's eternal. You are in a relationship with a long-lasting friend, the best person you could ever be with. There's with someone that despite whatever challenges we face, or the difficulties we are thrown with, thrown, he is going to be with us. A friend, that, a friend that will challenge us and support us, but most importantly, a friend that desires to have a personal, interpersonal relationship with us. Sometimes I, I look at the wonderful things that God has made. He has created the whole earth. He has created each and every one of us. He has created the beautiful things we see: the sun, the stars, the moon, flowers. And I think in my, in my course, in my career, uh, I even get to see like, a, another insight to the beautiful thing that God has made in creating us and how awesome we are. And then I think this person wants a relationship with me. 
how awesome is that? This is the person that created the whole world and everything beyond, and he wants a relationship with me. He wants to be my friend. So, uh, just as uh, we're rounding up now, we, we all have uh, an opportunity this evening to, whether you're a Christian, whether you're not, to renew our relationship, to renew that friendship with him. And if you'd like to do that, uh, you can join me in a little prayer again. Um, and, yep, yeah, so... Jesus Christ, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for wanting to be in a relationship with me. And I, I'm sorry for any wrongdoings I've done. And I ask that you come into my life today. Amen. Amen.